thank you to our guest here today. Director Ray, I'd like to start with you. Um, Senator Grassley and Chairman Comer subpoenaed an FBI document containing an allegation regarding a pay-to-play scheme between then Vice President Biden and a foreign national, and your response was due just a little bit earlier today. So my question is, has the FBI complied with the subpoena for this document? Uh, I believe we submitted a uh, lengthy letter uh, earlier today. The, a letter, but uh, not the document that was the subject of the uh, subpoena request? I, I can't speak to the specific document. Uh, we are committed to working collaboratively with both committees, but we also have to balance sources and methods and ongoing investigations, uh, and we will continue to work through the accommodation process as has happened uh, many times in the past. Was there a plan to submit the document, or will it be never submitted, or has there been a conclusion? I would, I would, I would refer to the letter, which is, I think, quite detailed uh, and kind of goes through a fair amount of discussion about um, our proposed approach. To, to addressing the document. I do want to confirm, though, the document does exist, the FD-1023. Uh, I, I, I really can't get into the specifics uh, here. I, I will tell you that uh, we understand completely the importance of congressional oversight. That's important to me. I also understand very much, as I, I think you do, the importance of us protecting sources and methods and ongoing investigations, uh, and we're committed to try to work through the process. I had a frustrating conversation last year with Attorney General Garland about something I'm still trying to understand here, and that's how the Biden administration can impartially investigate the Biden family. And so I want to come back to that with you, if I could, to, today to get at it a little bit deeper. My first question is whether you or anybody else at the FBI has communicated with White House employees or with Attorney General Garland or with DOJ staff regarding investigations that pertain to President Biden or to any member of his family? Well, I, I certainly have not communicated with the White House uh, about any investigation on that subject. Um, my instructions to our... And, and would that also include Attorney General Garland and the DOJ staff? Well, I, I don't know that I can get into any discussions I had with Attorney General Garland. I talked to him, you know, uh, probably every day, uh, one way or another, about all sorts of investigations, so that one's a little trickier. But uh, what I will tell you is, uh, as you know, I'm an FBI director appointed by the, the previous president, uh, and our uh, agents in our Baltimore field office uh, are working with a, a U.S. attorney from the previous administration, that is the U.S. attorney in Delaware, mm -hmm. uh, on, I think, the investigation you're referring to. And my expectations uh, of our agents on every investigation, which I communicate uh, like a broken record, uh, are that we are to follow the facts wherever they lead, to whomever they lead, no matter who likes it, no matter so who would it that makes Delaware, happy or unhappy. So would that Delaware U.S. attorney be the person then responsible for deciding um, about unlawful ev uh, evidence of unlawful conduct by the president and about what to do with that evidence? Well, again, I don't want to uh, engage in hypotheticals, but the Delaware U.S. Attorney is leading, I think, the investigation that, you're, that has been publicly disclosed mm -hmm. that you're, I think, referring to. Let me just <laughs> come back to what I'm trying to understand then. If the FBI has in evidence, has uncovered evidence, that alleges criminal conduct by the president. I'm just telling what. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And you then, I presume, hand this to the DOJ if you uncover this. But I understand the DOJ's policy is they're not going to charge a sitting president while that person is president. And the DOJ is not going to provide that information to Congress, not going to comply with subpoenas for documents. Um, it, it feels to me like it's a dog chasing its tail. And the question is, if illegal conduct is alleged or uncovered, how does the Congress or the American public ever get that evidence? Well, I, the um, decisions made by DOJ uh, about uh, how to staff prosecutions, at which U.S. attorney's offices, which counsel to appoint, all those sorts of things are uh, entrusted by regulation to the department, mm -hmm. to the attorney general. I can speak to what the FBI's role is and my expectations of FBI agents, um, and those are the ones I've communicated. But to be clear, if evidence were uncovered by the FBI, you would hand that over to the DOJ. They then make the determination, whether it's the Attorney General or, the, in this case, the Delaware U.S. Attorney, what to do with that evidence. 
And again, their policy is not to charge a sitting president, and we can't get the evidence in Congress. Is that correct? Uh, decisions about who to charge, what to charge, uh, those are decisions made by prosecutors at the Justice Department, uh, including the U.S. Attorney in Delaware. Um, and decisions about the Justice Department's communications about its decision making are the Justice Department's decisions. I don't want to speak for them on we're, that. We're, we're right back at where we started without being able to clarify how we have an impartial investigation here, and I appreciate the opportunity to get some oversight. It's just very frustrating when we can't. Thank you. Thank Director. you, Senator Haggerty.